Madam Master of Ceremonies, fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests. In his inaugural speech, John Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Powerful words. While he was in office, he worked on fulfilling his campaign pledge to get America moving again. His economic policies created long-term growth. He put in place programs to combat persistent poverty. His vision created a program that landed us on the moon. Ronald Reagan had visions of economic prosperity, an end to the Cold War, and an end of the nuclear arms race. While he was in office, he also worked on his campaign pledge to get America moving again. His economic policies created a very long period of economic growth. His collaborations with Mikhail Gorbachev created the INF and START treaties, which reduced the number of nuclear weapons, intermediate and long range. No one can forget the speech where he said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall, which led to the beginning of the end of the Cold War. Reagan and Kennedy were visionary leaders. Visionary leaders come in all shapes and sizes. They don't just serve as presidents of the United States. We have a visionary leader here today who, like Reagan and Kennedy, had a vision to use images to share that common vision with others. Toastmaster Benjamin Yen created the Chinese Bilingual Toastmasters Club in Coral Springs. Can we give him some recognition for that? Yeah. Vision. What is it really? Why is it important? What does it do? A long time ago, I heard a story about a man who came across three buildings. He asked the first one what he was doing. The reply was, a mixing straw and mud. This man made low quality bricks. He said to the second builder, what are you doing? The reply was, I'm making bricks. He made average quality bricks. He said to the third builder, then what are you doing? The man smiled, had a gleam in his eye and says, I'm helping to build a cathedral. It will be magnificent when we're done. The third man had vision. He saw the future. He saw the big picture. If you look around, you'll see corporations that have vision. Apple Computer, Amazon, Procter & Gamble. If you follow the business-to-business -business market, you know that IBM and Xerox had visions that enabled them to be the leaders in their industry year after year. Did you know that Toastmasters has a vision? The vision is to be the first choice provider of dynamic, experiential, communication, and leadership skills development. Think about it. Think about the competition they have. The colleges and universities like Stanford, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, they all have executive development programs. Many large corporations have their own executive development programs. And there's companies like Dale Carnegie that have executive development programs. That's quite a vision. Now that you have a vision, you need a vision statement. The vision as defined by Toastmasters is a mental picture of where the organization aspires to be at a future date. I like that one. It's simple compared to most of what you read. And visionary leaders have vision statements, and they don't make them just for fun. They have a purpose. Vision statements provide a general direction for an organization. In 1865, John Saul created a vision statement 
that was made famous by Horace Greeley. Go west, young man, go west, and grow up with the country. It's general, not specific. It didn't say, go to San Francisco, California. It said, go west. Vision statements also provide a context for decision making. All decisions must line up with the vision statement. In addition, a vision statement will affect the organization's structure, and everybody will work together to get that organization structured to move in the direction of the vision statement. It also affects working relationships because of the values it instills in the teams that work in the organization. There are six characteristics of a vision statement. They are clear. What good is a statement that's vague and ambiguous and subject to interpretation? A vision statement must be clear. Also must be challenging. If things are too easy, no one will try. If they're too difficult, they'll quit. They're general, they're not specific. Go west, young man, go west, not go to San Francisco, California. They're people-oriented, because people perform the activities that get everybody to the vision. They're inspiring. Can you imagine having a statement leading a company that's not inspiring? I don't think so. And they're easily communicated. You can have a daily word, you can have a newsletter. There's many different ways. Most large corporations have vision statements. Nike has a vision statement to, for internal marketing purposes. It's what they call a mantra. And everybody probably thinks it's just do it. That's for the outside. For the inside, it's authentic, athletic performance. That creates a mindset for all the employees. When you build a vision statement, you have to know what your company does well. What is it about the organization that knocks the socks off the competition? Is it information technology? Is it marketing? Is it logistics? If you remember a couple of years ago, United Parcel had a massive advertising campaign for more than a year about logistics, which was their competitive advantage. What is the most important thing the organization does? What do they really want to do? I found one that I think is about the best I've ever seen on Papa John's website. It says, Papa John's will create superior brand loyalty. For example, raving fans through authentic superior quality products, legendary customer service, an exceptional community service. General, not specific. Go west. What makes the organization unique or special? What is it about the organization where it can get up and hit that grand slam home run in every game in the ninth inning? And what does the team or the people who work for the organization Expect. Respect, success, advancement. What makes the team feel good about the organization? Corporate culture, the ethics, community services. You also need to involve team members. There can be no bystanders. If everybody's involved, everybody will have a willingness, if not a burning desire, to participate in getting to the vision. It allows people to control their own futures. Isn't that what everybody wants? To control their own future? Control their own destiny? 
Involvement will also foster cooperation and collaboration. It will get everybody rowing all their boats in the direction that the vision statement wants them to go. Then you must communicate the vision statement. There's a lot of ways to do that. You can talk about it all day long. You can have that internal mantra. A long time ago, I worked for a company called Johnson & Johnson that had an internal mantra not too many people knew about outside of the country. And we talked about it at every meeting. It was, we service our customers from the womb to the tomb. And if you think about it, it was absolutely true. We had baby products. We had teenager products for acne. We had adult products for headaches. And we had end of life products. It's important to explain how moving towards the vision will benefit everyone. Will it mean increased income? Respect from having a job well done? Advancement? All these things matter to people, even if it's just group cohesiveness and a friendly atmosphere. Like Toastmasters. Does anybody know what Toastmasters' values are? Integrity, respect, service, and excellence. And you gotta be enthusiastic. Sometimes that is difficult. And a long time ago, I learned a little trick to build up enthusiasm. I took a Dale Carnegie course. There was about 100 people in the class. And we went to this hotel up in White Plains. And we took the course. And at the beginning of every class, the instructor would have everybody get up and do this little routine that involved talking and moving about. We would say, if you act enthusiastic, you will be enthusiastic. If you act enthusiastic, you will be enthusiastic. And you have 100 people jumping around doing this. What was surprising was that the fire department didn't come rushing over to the hotel to see what was causing the earthquake with the building to fall down. <laughs> but you know what? For the next three hours, everybody was enthusiastic and motivated, and we had a great time. It's a little trick that does work. And you got to show that you mean it. If you are not serious about it, no one will take you seriously. You gotta say what you mean and mean what you say. Here's a quote that I've heard a few times. If you want to build a ship, don't draw up people to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. And I've taken the statement and I've narrowed it down to five words. Vision means showing, not telling. I'm Toastmaster. Awesome. I love your speeches.